So we're just going to um, quickly frame up the, the context for the day. And as Nina described, uh, the Co-op Cafe has some specific goals. So it's really not a training or a workshop. Um, it's about having a conversation. And what we're looking for in the conversation is that when we leave, uh, we've moved our own thinking forward. So hopefully you came in with some stuff and uh, by sharing in a focused way with the uh, folks in the room, uh, when you leave, we can check this top level goal off, which is that we've advanced our thinking. And second level is to create a sense of shared understanding. So the point of having the um, small group conversations is really to be pushing around the ideas that we're working on today to see like, okay, I get what I'm thinking, what are you getting? And then we can just see, do we have some, some common understanding on these topics? Then the third level is alignment, right? And alignment is really about having a sense of where this could take us, right? So we're going to be talking about the decade of the co-op today. So we're thinking about where can, this, uh, where can these ideas that we're working on today move us in the next 10 years? And in co-op land, that means that we have a way of really um, kind of realizing the stronger together notion that we're trying to move in a common direction, right? So advancing our thinking, shared understanding, and, uh, and alignment. And we're using the World Cafe format, and they have this graphic that's up on the screen right now that shows this, this kind of expansive swirl that starts from uh, really a few people with a napkin, right? And then you leave and go, oh, you know, I had this interesting conversation today. And as you expand out, you have more and more people in that work. So we're doing that today. You'll be at, I think, five or six different table settings. And so your goal is just like keep expanding the conversation. There are times when Joel and Nina are going to ask you to bring it home and synthesize. And that's also exciting. But the idea is like, OK, where can we go with this? And then where can that take our work back home? Right? So we've got an in the room um, uh, you know, experience. And then we want you to be thinking, oh, when I go home, how can I be carrying some of these ideas? And then this is really a national conversation. So it's not just in your co-op. Hopefully, it resonates as important in your co-op. And it's not just something going on regionally. And I guess we'd say, because we have Dame Pauline Green from the International Cooperative Alliance really starting the day with us. And she's sharing her thinking from the global cooperative movement. So we could even say it's, you know, it's, it's bigger than, than national. But, um, you're in a cooperative cafe that has, uh, we've, this is our fifth one in March of this year. So on March 1st, we kicked them off in Portland, Oregon, and then there was one in Sacramento, and then there was one in Keene, New Hampshire, followed by Asheville, North Carolina, and then this is the kind of the, uh, the climax of this little series. And it's, it's um, just building this conversation so that we can really see, you know, what does it look like um, across the country. So the way the World Cafe idea works is it's around a powerful question. We really want you to push this question around a lot. It's, it's going to have uh, a World Cafe segment before lunch and then later in the afternoon. How can we begin to shape cooperative democracy and participation as a driving force for the success of our co-ops? And the second, I'm going to give you a little bit of context of like, how do we get to this question? But the point is, this is our question. And it's on the cover of your workbook. And it's on a page when we actually get to the World Cafe um, session. It's right there. And this is what we want you to, um, to really push around. Sub-questions, uh, what could it look like? What might happen? And what we're thinking of here is that it's not really like what's going on today. But this is about the success over time, the future success of the co-op. So we're imagining down the road. And we're going to be kind of imagining, what does this look like during that gap between now and 2020, or you know, the, the, um, the decade of the co-op, which is, uh, came out in 2012 and, 
and you know, maybe 20, 2022. It just doesn't have that ring to it. So a couple comments on where we got that question from. A few months ago, we introduced the four pillars of cooperative governance. And I just want to briefly describe that. At the top, we've got the success of the co-op. What is the impact that our co-ops bring our members and community? What does success look like? And at the bottom, we have the co-op principles and values, which really kind of infuse our co-op culture and create our institutional logic, color our decision making, and really who we are as organizations. So we've got success and impact at the top, our foundation based on, you know, decades and decades of, of uh, co-op experience. And then the pillars are teaming. Can we work well as groups of people? Accountable empowerment. Can we have accountability and empowerment as just common factors in our organizations? Then strategic leadership. Can we have direction and movement that we move toward intentionally and really keep a focus on and be amazing over time? And then cooperative democracy. And when we did our research on the four pillars, it was the cooperative democracy piece that is really di the differentiator of our kind of organization against all of the other kinds of, of, of organizations that are out there. So we're kind of putting the co-op democracy piece on the table today as part of our conversation. We're seeing it as a pairing with the um, strategic leadership. So it's not just, oh, what is democracy? It's, no, actually, what does cooperative democracy and participation look like as a strategic concept over the coming decade as a driving force in the success of the co-op, right? So we're going to really push, push that around. And uh, it's interesting because when we think about participation, I think it really is a topic that reinforces the concept of the pillars because participation does not live in one level of the organization of a co-op. Participation is something that every, involves everyone. Right? We can see it at the member level, board level, management, staff, people who just are you know, associated with the co-op in many ways. So I really like that, that uh, we get to start working right away with the four pillars of cooperative democracy with a topic that really shows how rich we are uh, running uh, these things throughout the whole organization. So that was one reason that we have uh, the question that we do. The other is that in the fall of 2012, the International Cooperative Alliance, uh, as, as the international year of the cooperative was winding down, they introduced the blueprint for a cooperative decade. And in the blueprint, there are three really big goals. They're talking about, and again, future think here. They're saying 10 years from now, we're going to look back and see worldwide that co-ops are the acknowledged leader in economic, social, and environmental sustainability number one. So that's their reading the pulse of what's possible in the cooperative movement. Number two is that co-ops are a preferred model, which I translate to mean that if people see that there's a choice between interacting with a co-op and some other form of enterprise and they get there's a choice, they'll choose a co-op. It's a preferred model. And the third is that co-ops are the fastest growing form of enterprise. And when you hear them talk about this, what they're getting at is in terms of impact. So that when we project ourselves a decade down the road and look at, well, what happened in the world in terms of really making a positive difference in our communities for people, it was co-ops. And what I think is really neat about the goals and the blueprint is I think it really resonates right down to the work that we're doing every day at our, at our food co-ops, that we can see these goals present in our work. So to me, it's, there's a great mapping from the local to the global co-op movement here. In the blueprint, they name five themes that are going to be key to the success of these goals. Participation, sustainability, identity, legal, and capital. When we saw this, we went, oh, let's really work on this participation theme. This is something that we know a lot about. And yet at the same time, if we're going to really use it as a driving force to influence the success of the co-op, we need actually to push our work farther. So um, again, that's where the participation part of the question came from. How can cooperative democracy and participation be a driving force in the success of the co-ops? The ICA has described it as, how do we elevate participation, elevate the meaning of membership and governance, 
And then the kicker for us was, and how do we have practical uh, ways of applying this? And our work is largely around building tools and resources and convening uh, conversations that really help us bring the practical kind of application into the world. And so we thought, well, let's work on what participation can look like. So in your workbook, maybe on the next page or two, there's a one pager um, that we've written up on participation. And it describes a new paradigm for participation and, some, uh, and a framework. The paradigm is this. Let's understand the success of the co-op, the strategic intent of the co-op, in such a way that we can map all of the meaningful ways that people interact with a co-op to the success of the organization. So that we're really showing how individual choices connect to co-op goals, and that there's a, a self-interest served and a common good delivered. All right, so let's try and break that down and as you'll see in the, in the workbook and as we'll kind of expand during the day, we came up with a framework to kind of help us see that all participation is not alike. And we figured out, let's, let's start talking about own, use, serve, and belong when we talk about participation. So now we have four different kind of lenses that we can look at uh, for, for um, providing kind of practical guide to participation. And today what's going to happen is we're going to focus on own and belong this morning. And in the afternoon, we're going to focus on use and serve. OK? So um, a little bit later, uh, the uh, belong and serve pieces are going to get unpacked. I'm going to just share a couple of comments with you on own and use right now. So owning the co-op is something that we have a lot, of, a lot of familiarity with. We can run out a member list. We can have meetings. We can have an annual report. We know that we have owners. Right? And yet, what does participation look like from an owner perspective? And I think it's most clear in a startup when a group of people get together and they say, well, I wonder what kind of organization we should be. And they choose a co-op. And they ask, well, how is representation going to flow through the organization? How are we going to do this accountability thing? And how do we describe the purpose and the mission? And what are our capital needs? And all of those kind of fundamental owner questions. And then after a co-op is formed, you know, over time, from time to time, you are checking. Does our mission still resonate? Are we interacting with people as owners? Right? Are we keeping people up to date with trends and market conditions that affect the business that we own together? But you know, I'd say critically important, but kind of low frequency in terms of how much work we do with the owner hat on. In contrast to using the co-op, when you create a co-op, it's actually using it that drives it forward, that actually is the economic engine. And this is something in contrast in terms of kind of frequency. You know, if we think of owning as a potentially low, you know, again, not at all being diminishing the value of owning, but using could be like, wow, five times a day instead of like, well, every five or 10 years, right? So there's a big opportunity here for, to really celebrate and provide feedback loops around using the co-op. And plus, lots of people can play in the, in the user level. It could be a member or a non-member, a staff member. You know, it it's, uh, has a, a much kind of broader kind of field of influence. So we'll touch on these uh, uh, a little bit more deeply. Um, but I wanted to give you a little bit of context to this question of, how can we begin to shape cooperative democracy and participation as a driving force in the success of our co-op? So number one, success of our co-ops, what impact are we going to have? And then how do we take these key ideas and really have them be part of what makes us more and more successful over time? What might happen? What could it look like? And in the morning, we're going to work on own and belong, seeing it that way. And in the afternoon, we'll look at it through this uh, use and serve. So to kind of reinforce this idea, that um, I really want you to not just dwell in what you know already, but to really be listening to the people at your table to hear what they know. And also, we have invited some people to share a perspective. We've asked these people to come in, provide a perspective, to stir the pot, 
right? So no one's going to have the whole story here, solve the whole riddle, and they're really just giving you some information to push around in your own conversation. So some of these are going to be uh, in person, and some of them are going to be recorded video. And the purpose is just to simulate your own thinking to elevate the conversations that you're going to have. Um, lastly, a uh, big shout out to the National Cooperative Grocers Association, the NCGA. The NCGA is sponsoring the uh, Cooperative Cafe series. And as a way of just you know, building this conversation, the national conversation, so that we can be stronger together. So uh, thank you, NCGA. And uh, over to your cruise directors. <laughs>